guys, welcome back to the Tuxton Tires YouTube channel. As always, I'm Zach, and this week we're talking about the aftermath of Hot Rod Power Tour after doing it in my street legal stock car, and we got some problems. <laughs> Hey, is that Timmy's? Yeah, because we're in Canada. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so you already heard what we're trying to accomplish in today's video on the C1 Chevelle, my street legal stock car. This is the aftermath of Hot Rod Power Tour. Uh, so basically, we've been home for about four or five days now. I've basically just been relaxing after the trip. Uh, obviously, the car drives amazingly, but it's not super comfortable. So obviously I've let my butt rest for a couple days, uh, but we did have some problems arise after we did the whole trip. Uh, while we were down there, if you watched the last video of us actually doing Hot Rod Power Tour, uh, we only had that clutch line blow at the start of the video, and then uh, we had a coolant leak on some rad hoses. But other than that, we didn't really have too many issues while we were down there, uh, but we did, uh, I kind of noticed it as we were driving home from Indianapolis uh, that uh, my brake pedal was a little bit spongy. Uh, it wasn't as firm as it was at the start of the week. And I did notice that actually in the one rim, you could see that there was a whole bunch of like uh, brake fluid in it and stuff like that. And the one caliper on the driver's side is seeping in the back. Uh, so you can see in the background here, I got a new caliper for that. And if you notice the other box, we're having clutch issues. Uh, so I think from just sitting in the traffic down there and the motor and the whole car just getting so heat soaked from just sitting there and idling, uh, we put an old clutch into this thing when we were building it. Basically, I was just like, oh, it's probably good enough and it should last. Uh, but I think maybe just from the heat, the spring, like oh, the fingers on the pressure plate just weakened off and now it's not holding the disc. Because if I jump onto this thing, like say we're like leaving from a stop sign or even just like being in like fourth gear, uh, it just like revs to the moon. Uh, so either there's something lodged in the clutch that it's not grabbing good enough, or like I said, the springs on the fingers aren't grabbing the disc enough anymore. And it's just obviously letting it slip. Uh, so I did pick up a new clutch for that just so that, uh, you know, we're gonna just resolve all those issues all at one time if that's the problem, which I think it is. Uh, but other than that, we didn't really have too many other problems on Hot Rod Power Tour. Uh, towards the end of this video, I am going to talk about kind of my thoughts on Power Tour this year, uh, how basically everything went, and uh, yeah, basically just anything else I want to talk about. But uh, I think what the plan is here is uh, we're going to get Dad's wagon off of the hoist. Uh, we're going to get this thing on there just so that we can do everything from underneath so that it's going to make my life a whole lot easier. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll get these things swapped around and then uh, we'll come back to once we're underneath the car and checking things out. Lacey's also super happy that we are back home now and she has her jungle gym to climb onto, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so we got the Chevelle in the air now and me and dad have had a chance to look underneath this thing to see where it's leaking from and kind of what we need to get. Uh, so. It kind of fooled me that, uh, you know, I thought that this was brake fluid, uh, but it just seemed to, you know, work out that it's probably just a bad seal on this hub and it was actually just fluid leaking out of the rear end. Uh, so ho hopefully this caliper is in good shape. Uh, like I said, we had a spongy pedal, so maybe it was just from the fluid getting on here and it may be slipping. I have no idea. We'll check it out anyways. Uh, our pads look like they're in good shape, that they're not like far away from the rotor. Uh, so that's super awesome. So basically, I'm just gonna have a spare caliper around, so you know, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but other leaks on the rear end uh, from these six bolts on this side. Uh, so if you watched the rear end video, we actually uh, put this new tube into this axle and I put RTV on all these six bolts right there. Uh, but on this side, I didn't do that. So it's just leaking out of those. So maybe we'll clean it up and put some RTV onto that so that they don't leak. And then, uh, Looks like we just had a decent pinion leak because you can actually see like a clean section there from where the oil was actually running down. Uh, obviously with the quick fill on this thing, it would make it super easy to just add fluid. So I'll just make sure that this thing is nice and topped up for now. Uh, we're probably not gonna get into changing the seals in this video just because I don't have them and uh, I need to do some research on that. Uh, but up front here, uh, we had a couple of leaks on the transmission on where the shift levers are it looks like they were leaking out of there because up up further there's no leaks so basically i just think it was out of those two things uh so we'll just make sure that the transmission has fluid in it 
and uh, we had one small leak up here on the uh, oil filter lines. I don't know if it's actually coming out of the fitting there or if it's the line that actually comes out of the pan. Uh, I'll just make sure that everything is all topped up with fluids. Um, so basically I think what we're gonna do is on this thing, um, I'll just make sure that everything has fluids just because I do want to drive this car this summer and then uh, maybe when it's down season on this thing we'll actually like rip it apart and change out all the seals and make sure everything's good to go. Uh, but for now everything seems fine and it's not grumpy that you know like the transmission's not shifting and the rear end's binding up so we're good there. Uh, but we are still going to rip this transmission out and change out this clutch just because I know it was slipping. I would really like to see what's kind of going wrong with that. Uh, basically, we got a caliper for the shelf just in case we ever have to repair that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get this transmission ripped out of this thing, check out the clutch and get that new one installed. So we'll come back to once this thing is a little bit more torn apart and we can see what's going on. So we got the transmission ripped out of it. We kind of got it ratchet strapped up above the Y over there. So it's holding back there. And uh, you can see that we got the bell housing off over here. And uh, the flywheel doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. It's got a little bit of chatter marks in it. I just think that's maybe just from, I don't know, that disc kind of flying around in there however it wanted to. I see there's just like a little bit of fluid there. Maybe just came out of the bearing. Uh, but over here, on the ground, we got uh, the new clutch and the old clutch. And when we took the old clutch out, these fingers did not move whatsoever. Uh, Dad also took a measurement off of the ground and this one's like two and a half and those fingers are at two and seven eighths. I understand that manufacturer could be a little bit different for that, but when the fingers didn't move on this one, this one is definitely baked. Uh, we will keep this, uh, uh, friction disc around for a while just because there's nothing wrong with it and uh, we could always use that as a spare if we need to but uh, I might paint that up we'll get that installed and then hopefully we got a better clutch we are going to have to set up our uh, uh, release bearing just for the spacing just because it's probably going to be different so we'll get that all set up and then uh, we'll get the transmission thrown back together and see if it works Lacey over here she is just helping <laughs> So I didn't take the video before we got the bell housing on, but the new clutch is in there. Uh, we made sure that we checked that our clearance for the hydraulic release bearing is gonna work. So we're gonna get this transmission back bolted up and we'll get everything back together and then we can see if it's gonna work. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna come back once she's all put together. So we got the whole transmission back in, it's all bolted up. Uh, we still need to check these lines over here for if they're leaking. I think dad sprayed them off and maybe tightened it up. So we'll see if that continues to leak. Uh, but everything else under here is looking pretty sweet. You can see that new clutch in there. So hopefully it's going to work. We did test it to make sure it goes back and forth. Uh, so all I got to do, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I just got my one tunnel piece out. So I got to put that from the top. Uh, but uh, we're going to get the car down from the hoist now and uh, see if it's actually going to work. But uh, looking pretty sweet under here though so just before we took it off the hoist i figured i bought this heat wrap for like the headers but uh, i don't think that they're much of an issue so i ended up just wrapping the y we made and that pipe going towards the back just to try to keep the heat out of the car uh, so we have you can see those white shields that heat wrap and the sound detonating so hopefully it's not going to be as hot in the car as it was but uh Let's get this thing down and uh, let's talk about kind of how I felt about Power Tour this year. Lacey, you gonna help out too? Nope, you just woke up. <laughs> Alrighty guys, well, there we have it. We fixed up the Chevelle, it drives awesome. Uh, maybe we're gonna take you guys for a drive in this thing pretty soon so you can get, you know, see a little bit more. Uh, I still have a little bit of tuning to do to this car. Um, I want to hook it up to the laptop obviously because I know we didn't show it very much of kind of like how this thing works but I did put an MSD ignition controller in it for the LS uh, so we are able to plug into that uh, so I think I want to put some timing into it I want to check the jets and stuff like that because of the carburetor it's just it's running so fat right now it's just like you know you can't when you get onto it like this thing is pretty quick but it's not as good as I think it should be uh, so other than what we just needed to fix for the clutch, um, I still need to get those seals for the back, for the rear end, and then doing some tuning. This thing is pretty well dialed in. Um, there's a few small things like 
when I drive, the air actually pushes the hood down and it kinks it down. So I got to add some rods in there to hold it up. I actually did that in the front here because it was all rotted out and stuff like that. But those are little minor details. Uh, but I figured we'd talk about kind of how Power Tour went uh, and, you know, just try to get some stuff maybe that wasn't put into the video. Uh, so basically when we left here, uh, we tried to leave at my house at like 4.30 in the morning. Uh, we didn't make it too far. It was literally about 20 minutes down the road that we had to turn around and my clutch line blew. Uh, so in this thing, I put a hydraulic release bearing. Uh, so I originally thought that that kind of overextended uh, because I have had one of those before in another project that I've done before. Uh, it's not on the channel, uh, but it actually overextended because the clutch pedal was pushing the hydraulic release bearing too far. And basically when I lost the pedal, I thought that's what happened. And I was, you know, I was pretty bummed because, you know, it was like we did all this work to get the car basically ready for power tour. Like me and dad busted our ass on this thing since Motorama. We've done so much work to this car. It was insane. And I was pretty bummed that, you know, like a, a clutch pedal or something was going to basically not let us go on Hot Rod Power Tour. Uh, so luckily enough, when we got the car back home, we put on the hoist, you could see all the fluid. So at that point, I was still pretty sad that I was like, dang, this is a hydraulic release bearing problem. Basically, my thought was is that we were going to put a new O-ring into it because that's what happened before. Basically, the O-ring split and all the fluid came out. Uh, so when we took the transmission actually out, uh, dad noticed because it was like he was messing around the hydraulic release bearing and it wasn't extended out. It was back to where it was supposed to be. And an actual little piece in the line. So um, if anybody, if you're not familiar with the hydraulic release bearing, basically they have uh, one for where the line comes in from your uh, clutch master and uh, one for your bleeder. Uh, so we had both of those extended out of the case so that you could do everything from underneath the vehicle. So like um, if you had to hook up a flex line to it, you could, cause I had just a hard line to it there. And then we had a hard line going out for the bleeder screw. And dad was kind of pushing on it while it was still all hooked up. And you could actually see just by the fitting, a little bit of fluid coming out. Uh, so we were like, huh, maybe we should crack that apart. So we took the whole line off, took the whole release bearing out. And uh, you could actually see that, I don't know if it was from vibration on the line, cause I have the line fixed on the firewall and there's just a bit of flex that actually moves back and forth. Cause the hydraulic release bearing only moves about a half an inch when you're actually like engaging the clutch. Uh, so, but you could actually see a crack behind the fitting that we had on there because it's like a dash four AN fitting. And I guess just from the vibration, it actually just cracked the line and that's where the fluid was going. So luckily enough, we were able, we had, uh, dad had some more like AN line, just like that braided stuff where you put like the line together. So we ended up just like getting rid of all the hard line and we put in like a whole, um, flex line right to the release bearing, which we probably should have done in the first place. But, you know, I've done that. I did that before in another vehicle and I was like, yeah, it's probably fine. So basically after that, you know, we bled the clutch again and, you know, Austin came back with us here to my house. And from there we were like, well, I guess the clutch is working. Let's just hit the road. So basically I drove this car like three times up and down the road before that point, before it actually breaking. And we only had about, maybe not even 20 kilometers on the car before we actually left, which is completely insane if you really think about it, because you know, like <laughs> I've never drove this car other than when we drove it into Motorama. Uh, but you know, that's off of a trailer and you know, just driving around parking lots and stuff like that. Even like, you know, when we brought it to a garage or whatever, it's like, you know, it's just, I've never physically been inside this thing. So it's like to drive this car down the road was just crazy. Like I've never felt anything like it. I understand like it, if you don't know about this car and the suspension it has with the truck trailing arms and just everything it's got going on with how wide the tires are, it's like this thing is wicked in corners and like the way the power comes in, even though that it's not tuned properly right now, it's like just feeling how that trailing arm suspension, it's like, it's basically digging the vehicle under like, you know, the power underneath it. And it's like, absolutely insane so it's like basically just being able to drive this thing for the first time and getting it out on a highway was just like so cool uh so you know the whole trip for power tour was pretty good that way we didn't have many problems other than the cooling issue which you did you guys did see that 
uh, in the video, but I don't know if I got into depth with that. So basically, uh, from like our to talk about power tour on how where we stayed uh, is we we tried to camp as much as possible. Uh, so it was nice that in Bowling Green the uh, campground is basically like right attached to that racetrack. Uh, so I think like the first couple of nights we actually stayed there. Uh, we didn't do the route that much. Uh, we kind of just, wherever people were going, we were kind of going with them. Uh, so from the Nashville location, where uh, I think that was the second day, Nashville Super Speedway, we ended up driving all the way back to Bowling Green to just go stay back at Bench Bend uh, Park there. Uh, just because it was a pretty nice park, you know, the showers were there, they were pretty nice, and, you know, we were familiar with the area, so, you know, might as well go back there. Uh, so then... With the cooling issue, it was like we went out that night to get dinner or whatever. It was pretty late. Uh, nothing was open. We pull into a parking lot. Just It was like 10 minutes from the campground. And all of a sudden, like I got out of the vehicle and the place that we were trying to go eat was actually closing. So that was fun. Uh, but I just saw just a little trickle of the coolant on the ground. I'm like, oh, well, this isn't good. Uh, so luckily enough, Evan from Enemy Metalworks was with me. And uh, he had some Gorilla Tape on him. Uh, so... My lower radiator hose, um, when we put the rad hoses on, we did that for Motorama just to get the car over there. And then I didn't think anything of it because I'm like, well, you know, the rad hoses are on there. I didn't know how old they were, whatever. Uh, so uh, a crack was actually in the lower one and that's what ended up leaking on that lower hose. So luckily enough, it wasn't any of the joints or anything like the rad or anything. So it was just a rad hose. Uh, so, you know, we gorilla tape that thing just got it back together trying to hold it and I think like I drove I drove pretty I wouldn't say pretty quickly but we drove you know at a decent speed getting back over to bench bend and we were able to get in there and I only lost about a half a jug of coolant so I think I mentioned that maybe in the last video uh, but that's a little bit more in depth of kind of what happened there uh, but other than that you know we didn't have too many issues else on the car uh, if anybody's thinking about doing power tour from where we come from here in Canada and Ontario, the roads are like, you know, if you haven't been anywhere else, they're really nice. So we don't have like major bumps and potholes and stuff like on the highway or anything else. Like down in the States, we're not used to that. Like it's just like some states are just worse than others. Obviously, if you are from any states and if your roads are really bad, definitely comment down below. I'm not saying all of them are like that, but there, it's Power Tour is definitely a it's going to deal on your vehicle in ways where you just normal driving wouldn't like you're putting so many miles on your vehicle and just going through all the conditions that, you know, normally you wouldn't. So it's like, um, uh, from last year, obviously if you see my 54 in the background there, we did power tour in that last year. I was kind of like, I knew that that was a thing. Uh, so I made sure that with this thing that we were going to be able to handle all those issues with rough roads and whatnot. Uh, so we didn't really have many problems with like suspension stuff breaking. You know, I've gave it a once over when it was on the hoist. Everything is still pretty tight, so that's pretty awesome there. I was definitely doing nut and bolt checks while we were on the road, uh, like with my lug nuts and stuff, just because my tires are a weird, weird situation to begin with, just because they are an oversized lug nut. Uh, so I don't know how else to explain that, but they are like a one inch lug nut just because of the rims that I have. Uh, they're meant for a five eighths. Uh, stud, but I'm only running a half inch. Uh, so I was making sure that all the bolts were tight that way on the wheels that we weren't going to lose anything like crazy. Um, only other learning experience with this car was the locker in the back end. Uh, just because I've never drove with a Detroit locker or a quick change rear end. So that was a learning curve as well with power tour of like basically me just learning this vehicle and how to drive. Uh, so it was like, <laughs> like, you know, the first corner we went around and the thing went boom. I'm like, oh my God, this thing is broken. Like, what is wrong with this car? Like, cause driving in the backyard here, it's like, you know, you do slight little turns, you hear it clicking. You're like, okay, that's fine. And then it's like, you know, just trying to put any kind of power into this thing in the corner. It was like, boom, and we kick it sideways. And I'm like, there is something wrong, but it's just, you know, I tried to do some research and I guess maybe that's just how it is. Maybe there is something wrong. So I think you know, when we're going to rip the quick change apart, I'm going to look in there just to make sure everything's okay. But I think that's literally just how it is. Because obviously, we were putting this thing through its paces. You know, like that rear end, 
like I understand it's like race application it can handle abuse but it's like highway driving is like a lot worse I would think on it than anything just because it's like it's repetitive like I understand cars like this like would usually drive on a racetrack with a quick change rear end but it's like after the laps you know it's getting torn apart you know and then like they're checking it out and like we were just pounding miles onto this thing like we did 2300 miles total on this thing on power tour which is absolutely insane but you know other than those few little things like the rear end leaking and you know like the rad hose and my clutch line we didn't have many issues uh one thing i did learn from this year though like like the heat it was just like this car obviously with the way i made the exhaust and everything um it's just way too close to the vehicle this thing is all right like if you're driving maybe like an hour away from home and you're driving consistently with the air blowing underneath it it's not bad but it was like waiting in the lines like i like we it wasn't too bad to get into the events i think we waited the longest it was this year was like 45 minutes but our buddy evan uh he actually ended up waiting i think it was like an hour and a half in one of the lines just to get into that was nashville super speedway Mind you, he was fine for heat, but us, it was like, this thing is just like an oven inside. So obviously I tried to, like, I was more concerned about the noise when I was doing this, so that's why there's so much sound detonating insulation in this thing, just because I knew it was going to be loud. The rugged radio headsets was definitely like a saving grace for our ears, because we drove the first, I think it was about hour here in Ontario with the headsets off, just because I wanted to make sure that I could hear if there was anything really wrong going on, but with the quick change, you couldn't hear anything anyways. Uh, but the heat, like I, I didn't have time to put like header wrap onto the pipes underneath. Uh, so like <laughs> we had like uh, my fiance, Michaela, she was sitting like sideways in there just to get away from where like the exhaust pipe runs underneath us. But mine, where my foot was, it was like I couldn't really move it just because right where the main pipe runs for the driver's side is right where the gas pedal is. So I had my foot basically the whole time right above <laughs> right where the heat was uh so i took like one of my crappy hoodies that i usually wear out here in the shop and i put that down and then my buddy austin ended up giving me some kind of like wire wrap stuff uh the stuff that you put over like you'd sleeve over something just just if you're trying to keep the heat off of it so i had that on top of a hoodie just to save my foot from the heat because obviously my other leg if i wasn't using it for the clutch i could keep it away from where the heat was so that was all right so that was with this car this year with power tour i learned that it was like you know just make sure like heat shields and we tried to do that underneath this where there was like a heat barrier and stuff like that so it's like i put an extra piece of aluminum in there but once this car just got heat soaked everything just got hot so it's like and, and another funny thing i don't know if it shows up in the last video uh but in the back luggage tray area in this car is that's where we were keeping our tent just because it was like it was the easiest way to keep it in there uh, but it's actually in the background there, and if you, I don't know if you can see that the one, you can see a pointy thing hanging out. Well, that thing, it's made that like you obviously twist it out, and it comes up, and it's a really awesome tent where it's like you don't have to do much to, like, take it out and put it away. Uh, but from sitting just in the 45-minute traffic just to get into Nashville, I think the heat made the fiberglass brittle in that and it snapped the pole so i don't know if you can see that in the video in the morning of us fixing the coolant lines but our tent like peaked up and we were so tired that night that we got back from driving from nashville back to bowling green we we're like we're not dealing with a busted tent so i think we ended, we ended up sleeping in it we set up our sleeping uh air mattress and whatever but it was like yeah so like the heat just cooked everything in the car so like that was definitely something learning this year that is like that was a thing like last year it was makes sure the cooling system and the transmission were good so uh if you haven't watched my video from last year you can see that, like if you go watch that stuff and see what we learned last year of what we brought and everything that way uh but uh we definitely didn't have the same transmission problems as we did last year with like the uh, pilot bearing because that thing it wore out the pilot bearing and then it was just i didn't know if we were actually going to make it home but with this thing i was pretty confident with the whole drivetrain that we weren't going to really have any issues that way so you know knock on wood that nothing happened that way so that was you know awesome um 
you know, I, other than just trying to keep cool, obviously we, we put the vent windows, in, vent windows in just so that it could blow air on us. This car, it doesn't grab the air quite like an older car does. Uh, so we were definitely cooking. If we were driving, we were fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, overall the trip was pretty good. I can't, I, it was definitely a learning experience, but we didn't have as rough of time as some other people did obviously on the trip. Uh, so, but I would still definitely recommend doing Hot Rod Power Tour. I think we're going to take something different next year. Um, this car, um, I want to do other things with it. So I think uh, we're not going to do as crazy of a long road trip in this car maybe ever again. Uh, but definitely some local stuff, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. The Chevelle is been an experience building this thing. I've heard it all from, you know, you're destroying an old vintage race car to that's the coolest thing that you could do with it. Uh, so, you know, and even meeting other people that have taken other stock cars and made them street legal. So like talking to them and seeing their experiences has just been like super wicked. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I would say if I didn't have anything else to do a hot rod power tour in, I would definitely take this again. I would do some things differently um, just for, you know, hey, let's maybe tune the car before we go. But we were, we worked the night before even like packing and getting this thing ready just to leave for power tour so i mean like we did the best we could with what we had so you know it's just super awesome that this, this car could come together uh it's not the end for this car yet i don't know when you guys are going to see it next uh but uh you know we are starting other projects and stuff like that but uh, just before we end off this thing one more note that i have in my brain is we overpacked again for power tour. Uh, I, we definitely used more of my tools and other people's vehicles than my own. Uh, so that's not a bad thing. Uh, but the weight, uh, with this car having the load bolts that we could change the suspension really wasn't an issue. But after taking that out and driving it around here locally now, I could definitely tell the difference of how weighted down the Chevelle actually was from power tour. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was, I think the last thing for power tour, definitely comment down below if there's anything else you guys want to know. I can always do another video, uh, cost wise this year definitely was, it, it wasn't too bad. Um, like I think gas was our most expensive thing, but I think the whole trip and I'm going to put this into Canadian dollars. I don't know what it would be into American dollars, but I think we spent around like 2,500 bucks Canadian. So maybe around like two grand US to do hot rod power tour. Uh, so it was like, we were taking it as a vacation and uh, basically sightseeing as we went. Like I said, it's more at the start of this is that we didn't do the routes. Obviously we knew with how hot this car was getting and also Evan's overheating issue that we couldn't sit in big lineups for a long period of time. Uh, so that was something to do with that. And then, uh, you know, we just wanted to sightsee and see different stuff in the United States. So we just, you know, we kind of did our own thing. I think next year we're going to do more of the route if we go. Uh, but I definitely have a different plan for that. Uh, but, uh, you know, just before we end off this video, uh, I want to give a big thanks to everybody that has contributed to this car. I know myself and my dad have put a lot of work into this thing uh, to make it what it is today. Uh, obviously, the guys that actually originally built this car... And, uh, you know, just them coming up with this idea of this thing, obviously racing it back in the day, and then I was able to bring this thing back to life. Uh, but I wasn't the only person to have their hands on to this car. And uh, I just want to give a big shout out to all those people. So like Evan from Enemy Metalworks, you know, he did a bunch of welding for me. Uh, his brother Jordan came out and actually did some work in the car. And uh, Jordan actually gave parts originally for the car when I told him the idea. So that's super cool. So did Evan and uh, Austin from Boosted Supersport, he came out, helped onto the car. The guys from DeBoss Garage came over when we originally got this thing and it really wasn't anything. They came out and gave me a helping hand putting the motor in. And uh, yeah, you know, there was other people that gave parts. Uh, Shea from Pre-60s, uh, he, along the way, you know, he was also very supportive of giving us parts for this car and believing in the idea of this thing before it was even anything. And the guys from Lyle's Exhaust, you know, giving us that whole exhaust system so this car could have what it has today because obviously if you know if say if i had to do that the exhaust system wouldn't have turned out the way it did if it wasn't for those guys over at lyle's exhaust uh there's a couple other people that gave us some parts can't think off the top of my head right now who their names are but thank you so much i do appreciate you know 
everything that everybody has gave me for this thing. Uh, and uh, even you guys, the viewers, for watching all the videos on this thing, being supportive, uh, telling me different things, and even the haters. Because, you know, if it wasn't for the haters, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, piss them off and actually create the car that we have here today. Uh, so thank you to everybody that has been a part of this car. Uh, this has been a journey in itself, building it and taking on the road trip that we did and learning all the history. Like even taking it to a local show and having people come up to me and telling me that they used to watch this car race back in the day and that it's amazing that it's still around. I'm, it's, it's just, it's a very cool feeling being able to cherish a piece of history and try not to change it from what it was. I know obviously it's not exactly the same car it used to be, uh, but I'm very honored to be able to uh, take on this history and uh, share it with everybody and uh, just have an awesome time with this thing. So with that note, guys, thank you so much for watching all the content on the C1 Chevelle, the street legal stock car. I've had a blast working on this thing. And, uh, you know, there's we're going to do other cool things with this thing in the future. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, we are going to be starting a new project here. Uh, I've taken a little bit of time off just to relax, obviously, because, you know, we did put so many hours into this thing and, uh, you know, I was just feeling lazy. So, <laughs> but we got other cool stuff coming up here. Uh, I think we might do a shop update so you guys can got, get a little sneak peek of what's coming up next and kind of maybe what dad's been working on and uh, if we do anything else with the C1 Chevelle. Uh, but, uh... As always, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, don't forget to salute the beaver. We'll catch you next time.